Okay, I think we are ready. Our soups are ready, and uh, as I promised in the beginning, you are going to enjoy it very much. Today we have two different cooks. Maybe some of you remember them from before. However, they are very experienced, and uh, uh, I'm going to call first one, which is Milena. Look at it. Can you please come out? That's it. That's her. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Well, welcome. I believe this is the last uh, cooking class or a cooking demonstration within this session within Grinsby. But if you would like to attend others that we will do elsewhere, just place your name and your phone number and uh, Doreen or Nada or myself or whoever will get in touch with you and give you information where we will have next time what we will have. Um, as Nada said to you, my name is Melina. I'm originally from uh, Serbia. And um, about eight years before I was born, I mentioned this before, um, my mother got to know the health principles as outlined in the Bible. She became a, a strong believer in God and she believed in creation and she brought us all up in the same manner. And uh, when I was growing up, I decided that I needed to know a little bit more because I couldn't tell my friends at school, oh, my mom brought me up that way. That wasn't acceptable amongst young people, particularly in a communist country. So I started searching. I searched out that yes, we do have a wonderful God who is our creator. And we do have Jesus Christ who is our redeemer and our king and our personal friend. And I wasn't satisfied just to search superficially. I started searching a little bit deeper, and then I discovered that, that same God who created us, he created the whole heaven, and that wasn't all he did. He provided for us. He provided for us the food that we should eat. He placed laws before us and says, if you choose this and you do this, you will have good health and longevity. And Ever since then, I have endeavored to do exactly that. Um, I better not tell you how old I am, but um, I think I might be older than anybody else. So I have enjoyed good health, thank God. But I also have discovered that those who did not have good health and become health conscious or wanted to uh, turn it around, obey these words that are written out, become healthy. I did mention before here once that my mother uh, was sick. She became uh, very sick indeed. She got tuberculosis. And at the same time, she was expecting my brother and the doctors wanted her to terminate her pregnancy, but she refused. And she started um, searching out how to cure herself in a natural manner. And she succeeded. She lived to be 90 years of age and enjoyed good health, traveled the world, visiting us. I used to live in Australia in those days and New Zealand. And she enjoyed good health. My father died 15 years before her, yet he was a very healthy man, according to everyone but um, it wasn't his to enjoy uh, health, uh, longevity as my mother did. So today I'm going to show you certain, um, a couple of dishes that uh, might interest you, that will help you to um, enliven your day-to-day -day meals and perhaps replace some time a meat meal, if you wish so. Because the dishes that I'm going to show you is very easy to make very economical and very tasty. So we are going to do lentil patties, which is, I think, first on your list. Now, um, when I say this dish is very economical, uh, I believe that uh, the food uh, 
that I present should be within the reach of every family, regardless of their status in society. And I believe that we should all eat well. And this is why I choose um, and uh, make up various recipes that are very economical. In um, a pack or from a pack of uh, lentils, which are green lentils, this one, you have uh, 750 grams. Well, I have my sufficient for everyone that is gathered here plus to sample and had some of the lentils left over at home. So as I said, it is very economical. And I'm not sure how much this pack of lentils is, but something about three or four dollars. So if you have a family that is uh, four or that is two, you can cook it up, you can cook the whole pack and freeze the rest, or you can just cook according to what you need. So we better carry on with our um, and, uh, school. It's starting good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. The lentils that I have are already cooked. When you cook lentils, you just put a little bit of uh, salt in the water and cook them till they get soft. If I make any other lentil soup or lentil dish, I will cook it overnight in a slow cooker. But this one I did before I came here, and uh, it cooked slowly on the stove. So we have two cups lentils. It should be mashed, but we'll call it mashed. Then I have half a cup of uh, rolled oats. These rolled oats here I have mixed with flax seed. What I do usually at home, I soak roll dots while I'm measuring all the other ingredients. So that flex, ground flex seed um, gets mixed with roll dots and gives that sort of, uh, what would I call it, uh, jelly-like texture. And uh, roll, the <coughs> flex seed ground mixed with water is also very good uh, for binding. And I use it a lot in baking for instead of eggs. So we'll mix uh, flex, ground flax seed and roll oats and mix together. Okay. And then uh, we will put some uh, onions. Now I have somebody at home. I live with my daughter and her family, and my son-in-law does not like chopped onions in the food. He doesn't mind the flavor, he actually likes the flavor, but he doesn't like to see the onions chopped. So what I did, I just minced these onions. So it is one onion. This one might be a little bit big, but um, it's still good. After onions, we have garlic that is minced. So what I did when I was mincing garlic, I minced it together with parsley. It actually doesn't matter what order you are adding these ingredients, as, as long as it combines all together and works for you. So here I have parsley and garlic. And then we have herbs. We have sage and we have marjoram. After that, After we won't need, we didn't, uh, we didn't soak. Oh. After that, we will put some breadcrumbs. Here are the breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs also, um, they absorb extra moisture. But you can buy already my breadcrumbs, but it's nice when you make your own. You toast your bread in the oven and then just put it in a processor or a mixer, vitamizer, and just grind it up. A coffee grinder is just as good and just as quick. And then you know you have it always fresh. 
After that, we shall add our aminos, which is soy sauce or Bragg's aminos. Uh, soy sauce is just a little bit more dense and a little bit stronger and saltier. So you can use soy sauce or aminos. Um, if you do use soy sauce, please make sure it is the one that is naturally fermented without any additives. Then we also have some walnuts. walnuts. This might be a little bit coarse pieces, but uh, as I said, uh, with my grandchildren who are teenagers, they like something crunchy inside. And this is what um, I have. Every recipe that I demonstrate here to you, you won't find it on the internet. It is my original. I just love experimenting and I'm making things. So all we do now, and I have the, uh, the try. What? Biting try? Yes. Specify, please. Yes, sure. <laughs> See, she's complaining already. I don't know. It's hard to find somebody who is willing these days. Isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to find good help. <laughs> <laughs> So cheap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and they do come and say, but she's cheap, that's why I keep her. <laughs> but worth it. Cheap, but worth it. <laughs> yes. Now, since I haven't um, soaked these uh, oats before, I'll just add a few drops of water in order to be able to bind that. And you mix this thoroughly. I'm almost finished, yes. And you know what? I'm going to use half a cup measure. If you use a non-stick pan, my daughter has invested in that really heavy pans. Sometimes I find it hard to handle, but they are so good. You don't need to put any oil in. And of course, oil is the one that makes me expand. <laughs> so you no, just no. put it, I did here now half a cup, but you can put one third of a cup or all depends how you like them. And you tap them together. And here we go. Now, I never made them perfect because I'm not perfect. We leave them anyway, so. So, um, I just put them together. And you know, if I happen to be in a hurry, they get all sorts of shapes and sizes. Here, if you would like to go and show them how. Yes. Now, are there any questions? Can I just ask you, if you're going to soak the oats, like how much water would you soak? Uh, you soak the oats with, uh, what do we have here? Half a cup of water. Yes. So you just, uh, as you've seen me have it in a bowl, mixture of oats and ground flax seed. You pour half a cup of water on top, just stir it a little and let it sit while you're measuring other ingredients. Any other questions? Do you have a substitute for soya? Because uh, I know a friend who's allergic to soya. Right. Do you have a substitute? Yeah, you know Vegemite or Marmite, which you can get at Fortino's? Okay. Use a teaspoon of Vegemite or Marmite, put a little bit of water in and uh, stir it and pour that instead of soy. You can also use coconut aminos. Coconut aminos. That's something new. Thank you. There we go. Coconut aminos. You see, I'm not always glued in. By the way, I've been away for about three and a half months and uh, I've sort of lost touch. <laughs> 
<laughs> reports going around. But I believe Cochrane Caminos must have been here for some time, has it? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Nada. Any more questions? It's very simple, isn't that? Yeah, I remember when I wanted to marry my husband, or when he wanted to marry me, I should say. Um, he um, was saying, asking me, can you cook? And uh, I said, yes, but it's all simple. He says, oh, why is that? I said, because I'm a simple person. <laughs> so all my dishes are simple. and. Uh, very, very quick and easy to mind. Any more questions? If not, we will carry on, and this time we will have. Vicky. Yes. You don't say how long you would cook these for in the oven. It doesn't say that. Lentils or the, the patties? Well, I would suggest, I'm sorry, that's my omission. Uh, I would suggest that you put them in the oven to bite them in the oven and uh, turn them about after 15 minutes or 20 minutes, everybody's oven varies. At 375, I would say for 20 minutes, then turn them over and cook another 15 or so minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll be back for the other Now here is Vicky. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, it's a been a while since I was here. So I hope everybody's doing well. And we'll do another quick recipe. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. This recipe is very good even for lactose free um, and for people that uh, cannot take gluten. So it's, it's a good recipe. And you get a full meal because in this recipe, yeah, I need this. Do you need that? Yeah, I need this. Thank you. That's okay. That's heavy. It is heavy. Uh, we are now on uh, rice. Yes. Yes. Um, can this be plugged in? It is plugged in. It is. Okay. Oh, no, it is. Yes. <coughs> so we might not even have to this. So we'll see. Okay. So in this recipe, let's go through the recipe first. And then we'll do this very quick. So uh, what I'm using here uh, today is... Um, Brown basmati rice, and I thought I had the rice here. Okay, yes, we go. It's this rice. Okay. Now, how many of you have a rice cooker? Do you like it? I love rice. Cooking. I will tell you, I was given a rice cooker, and it sat in my cupboard for four years. I thought I don't need this thing. Once I started, I we we have a place in Europe, and I told my husband, I said, listen. We need to get a rice cooker. So I'm hold, watching who can get it for me over there. That's how much I like it. So um, it's really easy to make the rice if you do it in a rice cooker, right? So what I've done in order to save time, we have, I need this too, two cups of rice. So we have used this rice. I have put it in the slow cooker. Um, yes, that's about two cups of basmati rice. Everybody knows this rice, right? I have to put it through. So um, then we have um, two tablespoons of vegetable seasoning. So this is the seasoning I use. It's called Vegeta. You can get it in Fortinos if you need to. Um, there is another one that's a blue package. It's not as good for you. This is a bit more healthy one, and you can actually get it even in a health food store, this particular one. So we, it's, called, it's just vegetable, vegetable seasoning. Um, it's almost like a soup seasoning. That, that we use. So I use some of this and I put in the in the rice and salt to taste. That's all. No oil, no nothing. And I just uh, just have that um, uh, cooked and when it's done, it looks like this. Okay? So it's just a brown rice that we have. Sorry. Let's try this. We'll try this. I just cook this and see it comes out really nice and it has a, it's all, I mean you can even eat it just like this. Now, this is a basic rice recipe, so we can use whatever we want in there. In order to make this a full meal, so we have a rice, but we need some of the protein too, right? So we, for this, we um, have here two red peppers, two yellow peppers, and two orange peppers. I like color. I, I, as you can see, I like color. So 
I use I use peppers now. I have sautéed some already, so to save us some time here. I think. Are you okay with that, or should we? Yeah. No, we'll, I don't know how to sauté. Exactly. So, um, so we use. <laughs> She's taking us for some simpletons or something. <laughs> Open. No. <laughs> so when it's done, it looks like this, right? It's just sauteed. Now what I've done in here, I just put. Um, but you will see, I use other things in this, but I like to taste the flavor of each each thing separate. Yes. Um, like I said, I like color. So we're having a protein which is um, rice. Then I'm adding some of these peppers, and you can see how much juice there is in the herb oil. I'm going to leave some for the top. The paper top. There you go. Okay. And um, so we'll mix that in here. And then I have, now it depends how much you like of, of pepper. If you don't, I have, in my family, I have people that don't like peppers. Some of them don't like onions, some of them don't like mushrooms. So you can imagine, you know, when I cook, I have to be very versatile, right? So. Um, if you like peppers, you can add more. Now, here, what I have done, I have used um, three cups of mushrooms. I just cut them in four. I like the bigger chunks. Uh, so I have used mushrooms, a little bit of oil, a little bit of soya sauce, whichever one you can use that you like, some salt, and saute all this together. When it's half done, I add in cashews. I don't add them at the end. You have to add them before. They get a taste of the mushrooms, and mushrooms get the taste of the nutty flavor, so they both taste very good. Now, in this recipe, I'm using cashews. Um, almonds are even better, to be honest, but we wanted to change something. Almonds are really, really nice for this recipe. So instead of, um, instead of cashews, you can use almonds. And again, if you like more, you'll see, I, I, for the one that we're gonna try, I can put lots of that, because I, I like that. So I'm going just to put that in here, okay? And then we're going to mix this just nicely to, together. If you can have this done before and let it sit for about half an hour, nice and warm, um, the rice will get all the taste of, of the vegetables and this. Now, it has been said that if you have rice and mushrooms, you have a perfect protein, okay? So this is a really good dish. It can keep for a while, and you can take it for lunch tomorrow. You can make it the day before. Um, it's really nice, nice dish. So we just mix this nicely, and then we dress it up with this again. Okay, so we'll just put this over here. You know, if it tastes good and it looks good and it's healthy, you really need it, right? And then you put some of this on top. It's the same thing. But because I don't put the mushrooms together with the peppers, you get a real taste of each one on its own, you know? So that, that works out much better. Now, you can be more fussy. I usually don't have time, so this works. And this is your dish. Was it easy? It's very easy, right? So um, again, you can make it so, and you can have rice actually prepared before. And, we, and have everything. The worst thing for this recipe, the most time, is cutting up things and preparing. Once it's all done up, I mean, it's just like very short. And uh, th these peppers um, were done a little more than I would usually do. Uh, because they don't have to do too much. Now, I have, um, again, I have someone in my family who doesn't like chunks. So when I know that they're coming for dinner, I cut all this in very small pieces. I even cut the cashews in small pieces. But I think it tastes good, but to me this is better. So that's your recipe. Any questions? Yes? Your family, you're very accommodating too. No, well, no. I try to be, I try to be. <laughs> I have two questions. Yes. Uh, the, the, the rice is the cooked rice. Yes. It's two it's cups of cooked rice. Two cups of cooked rice. And yes. this whole recipe would uh, serve what six, perhaps? Depends how hungry you are. <laughs> yeah. It looks um, like a lot. It's so, it's quite yes. a bit. So you can cut it in half if you want to. But I always have, even if my family is not too big now because my kids moved out, I always have people in my house. So I always make up. This is my recipe. You can cut it in half if you like to. Again, like I say, if you don't put mushrooms in, 
you can actually freeze them, and when they are all done, they just add the mushrooms. Okay. So you freeze it without the mushrooms? Yes. You can freeze it with mushrooms too, but it's better not to. Uh, for some reason, they get too soggy, and I'm not too crazy about it, right? It's, it's better to have them nice and crisp. I like the crunchy, crunchiness. Sorry. And that's why I like the whole um, cashews or whole almonds or whatever it is that we are doing. And Any other almonds. questions? With almonds, when you are doing almonds, you can roast them a bit and then put them in rice, right? Yeah, you can. Or, yeah. It, it gives you that really nice roasted uh, flavor. Yeah. If, if we can do that, or we yeah. can just leave them with this, yeah. you know, and, and they do get, get nice taste for that. No questions? Good. When can we? As soon as you're done. <laughs> That's my Thank question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We will begin this gravy. You know, usually when people make gravies, they... <coughs> they plug in whatever they're doing. <laughs> no, they use a pot and put a stove on. <laughs> so, um, for this gravy, it's very easy and very quick and tough. In this gravy, as you can see, um, in this gravy we have oops, water, we have leeks. All right. We'll start with, uh, with uh, clean and diced, what we have here, leeks and grated carrots. I haven't been in a dish. So what you do is put a little bit of oil in, a little bit of water. May I have a little bit of that oil, quickies, which I didn't bring mine. Thank you. And we saute this, um, that is, oh, that is oil actually. There we go. See, my daughter did this measuring for me. And I'll use just a little bit of that water to saute it. I don't like to saute just in oil because this is healthy. without going into any chemical description, what happens to the overheated oil. When that is halfway done, we will um, add whole wheat flour. Instead of whole wheat flour, I'm using gluten-free flour because today, Lots of people are gluten intolerant. And because of that reason, I use all purpose gluten free flour, which you'll find in the supermarkets, and I'm sure you're familiar with it if you already have that problem. So we won't be waiting for this to go. You see, I make shortcuts, and this is what you can do with any of my recipes. You can make shortcuts. However, when you are, whatever you are solving, just cover it up, then it's going to release its juices and it's going to be much faster done, right? Thank you. You want to carry on? No, 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 no. It's your recipe. But I know something too. Good. <laughs> You've done it many a times. I'll tell you a secret. She does copy me at times. Copy you. <laughs> Here we go. We put some red paprika, and this is sweet red paprika. And when that is done, We'll add water. And we will add again the soy sauce or a stub substitute that I mentioned before. And this can finish cooking while you look at the finished product. As it cooks, this as it cooks till it gets nice and soft, it will be, so it will congeal a little bit. It will have that uh, saucy, um, gravy texture. See how quick and easy this is? 
I won't tell you how long it took me to wash all the leaves and chop them and everything else. Now, do you have any question on this? Yes. Um, the leaks, they are hard to clean, aren't they? What do you do? You chop them okay. in four and then run them under the water? No, I chop the leaks into another white part of the leaf. Yeah. I chop not all the way to the end, but almost to the end of the white part. Then I cut the white part in four lengthwise. And then I wash them all separately because with leaks you get dirt inside and I do the same with the green part. Wash them all separately. When I wash them separately, I just take a knife and go lengthwise and just cut in strips and then just chop them. But each part separately. Yeah, each part is washed separately. When you, you take a leaf, you cut it in four lengthwise, cut it in four lengthwise, then you wash them. When you wash them, you take each part, each leaf or whatever it is, and cut it into strips, and then just chop the strips. That's it. Would you rather have arrowroot flour than, say, cornstarch? Uh, cornstarch is very, um, very hard to, um, how shall I say, to decide which one to use. I believe the company that uh, um, is well known is Masanta, is it, for the seeds and cornstarch and everything else, the corn itself um, is not always organic and therefore it's hard to know which one to use and I stick to arrowroot which actually, may I have the yes. arrowroot bag please? What do you need? Arrowroot bag, that is with the other one. I find that arrowroot is so much better. Um, it's, um, if you look on the internet, key in arrowroot, it will tell you what it is and how it grows and everything else. It is, um, it is so much better. You can pass it around. So when, um, this is cooked. I just mix in some arrowroot with water. It's the same as potato starch or rice starch or uh, any starch. The starch is the one that gives that emulsifying like effect to a dish, and that's why I use that. So and it helps thicken it a little bit more. So I make uh, jellies and um, um, puddings and so on using arrowroot as well. So this is what we do. And now they can take it out there and let it finish cooking. Now this is a shortcut to this dish. I think Vicky was wiser to prepare it all in advance. There we go. Any more questions? No, it's simple, isn't that? I told you, I can only make simple dishes. <laughs> okay, now we'll have Vicky carry on with her other dish. Now this, Yes, you can take it out there too, Lillian. Uh, this dish that Vicky is going to do, this requires art. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I got her to do it. This is actually, again, the shortcut, a very easy way to do it. This is, <laughs> this is very easy to do. Now, but, um, what we used to do back home is to make the pastry ourselves. Right now, I don't think any one of you will try that. So I'm trying to do it the way you're gonna try to do this recipe. So I went and I bought a simple filo. Okay, before we use that, I'm going to, um, this is a healthy recipe, so we're using a tofu here. 
So you have there the amount, I think it's two of the hard boiled. I, I have crunched it a bit. What kind of tofu do you buy? It's a, it's a hard, um, hard tofu. It's firm. 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 <coughs> yeah, it's a firm tofu. Now, into the tofu, I'm not in favor of tofu. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like tofu that much. I eat it once in a while, but it's okay. It's good, but I don't even eat, it's, if you eat too much of it, you get first of all sick, and it's not really that good for you to eat too much of this. But for this recipe, we'll use tofu, okay? Now, tofu is okay if you do something with it. On its own, I don't know who likes It's tasteless, really. Who likes like tofu? You have to you do. make it up. Oh, guys, I don't like tofu. So, <laughs> anyway, that's good. Okay, so what we need is, uh, we need help to this, for this tofu. So, what do we have there? Let's, let's read here. It needs um, soy sauce. I'm using this one right now, and you can use whichever one you like when you have. Um, as I say, I don't like recipes, but I, I haven't done it by the recipe, too. But this time, we'll just put a little bit like this. That's enough. That maybe was one spoon. Whatever you like. We need some cloves of garlic. We have that, too. My mom was very nice. She did the garlic mess aside for us, so we have some garlic. You can use garlic powder too. Oh boy, this smells really good. I like the smell of garlic. Okay, yeah. Um, then we have, what does it say there? Garlic, turmeric. See, turmeric is something I, I learned to use here in Canada. I never used it in Europe, you know? So, um, it's okay. I like the taste and all that, but I don't, I don't know. Is that enough? You want, you you really want some nice more? Color. What would you like? My recipe is okay. I'll put some more so you can <laughs> so you can you can have a little more for turmeric. Now I'm just gonna mix this. It's good to have this mixed and stay a little bit in, in together so it can get all the you you can yes. You can get some oil in here, but I don't because we will have to use oil on the other side. So in this I'm gonna add my spinach which is just washed and cut nicely in small pieces. This time I can't, I can't go chunky with this, so I gotta cut this in pieces. Okay, and this would be salt to taste. Look at this, I got this fancy thing for salt. Let me try to use it. Oh, no, I didn't say she? Where did you get that? <laughs> okay, let's see. You do know how to use it. I'm trying, I'm trying. This is a, a kosher salt. It's really nice, but it's, uh, it's good. So salt to taste, and we're just going to mix this. I have to tell you, you have, for this kind of stuff, you can try different things to put inside. I have even tried potatoes with this, with spinach instead of this, like I said, because of my tofu. Leeks as well. And leeks and, and stuff. It, it's pretty good. So you can, it's versatile what you can do. Again, the, the longest time it takes is this. So that is what we need inside. That can stay there. I'll show you only a few of this. Okay, so for, I usually grease my pan on just a bit. I can open this thing. Do you need this item? Yes, I'll need that. Just a bit. Now, if you're using nonstick or you're, you can use parchment paper, you don't even have to put oil in there, whatever you like. Now, let's see how this one is. I bought one without crumbled inside, so I couldn't do what I was doing here. Okay. Now, you all know fuel dough. Right? Okay. Now, we need to cut this, and the best way to cut most of your dough, whatever you do, is with pizza cut. Because it, you can control it more, it doesn't move as much. Okay, let's see. One more. These, when they're fresh, are very nice and crunchy. Okay, so we need this, which is oil. And that, yes. Oh, and the spoon for here. Oh, that is okay. So what I will do depends how big you want to make them. I usually, and you can cut them this way too. But 
because it's spinach, they get very soft. So I like to use a little bit more of the dough. So I'm going to cut this in half. Make sure it's not cut. Cut it again in half. And you get a lot. If you're going anywhere for a party or you have people coming, this comes out a lot, quite a few pieces. Um, I'll cut off there, okay. We won't do all of them here, but just. And as you see, they're not all exactly even, but if you're fussy and you have time, you can go even. I usually don't have time. Once you have them all folded, it doesn't show anything. So I'm going to put just a little bit of oil on this. Ooh, this can be big. How did this one go? If you can make your own dough, or you can go, there is a there is a place in Hamilton, they, they sell the dough that's a bit thicker. It's much nicer. It is. It's much better for you. So, some of this on each corner. I'm sure you do this with, uh, with, with um, I've seen people eat this with, do this with meat and other, you know, even apples and raisins and stuff like that. You can use different things. So you just make triangles like this. Just watch this. The triangles are all so perfect. It might go all wonky when I'm doing it. <laughs> there, there is a little secret to this. Just tell it to Little secret is this. You have to make sure when you're folding that this side is always straight. It doesn't matter what happens on the side. As long as this side is straight. Look, if I go this way, I'm, I'm wrong. If I go just in the middle here, and then I fold it again, it's straight here. No, no, can you move the jar And then it's straight out? here. What do you need? Just move yes. the jar out. Yes. Yeah. So it's straight here. Then I'm going straight here. So then this one has to be straight again. See? As long as this side, this part horizontally is straight, you are fine. But you can't go wrong. See? You get a nice square. And even if it doesn't look as perfect as this, it's eatable. Yeah, it is. So again, start straight, you know, go this way. Okay, go straight. And once you get here, you can control. Okay, so straight again, straight, straight again, and again straight. This time I had this left. I just fold it underneath and I put it here. Okay, so we just go out that way. So, that is a question. Vicky, do you think you can use the gluten-free all-purpose flour? To make this? You, to make a pastry? Um, no. It does not, it does not, uh, go, depends what you put in that. Um, my daughter-in-law doesn't take gluten, so I have tried different things. To make them this thin, no. No. But it's almost like a pizza dough, just a little bit thinner, you can. You can do that way, but don't fold them that many times, maybe um, just twice. You can also use rice. Yes, rice flour. For spring rolls. Oh, yes. Oh. That's right. Yes. You can buy in, in uh, uh, Chinese oriental stores for spring rolls. Um, any other questions? Um, like I said, try to use different things in your, in your fillings. You can make them sweet or salty. Okay? Um, after, if you want to know, I can let you know where you can get the other dough, which is a bit thicker and it's much nicer and crunchier. It's easier to do. Okay? I think I'm going to take this so it doesn't fall. We clean, we clean up now, so it's you know, okay. I'm going to do so. Yes, please do. <laughs> you know, in our household, uh, we don't always serve dessert after a meal. Uh, first of all, uh, we don't believe it's actually necessary. But when we have visitors, um, we try to serve dessert. And at times it's hard to know what to serve as a dessert. Yes, you can bake the cake, but it takes a lot of work. Um, you can uh, make other things. I uh, try, or we, I should say we try, we avoid to um, mix fruit and vegetable in one meal due to the fact that the contents or nutrients in the fruit doesn't always agree with nutrients in the vegetables, so it causes indigestion. Therefore, we try to keep them separately. Um, if you want to know a bit more about it, um, I would suggest that you attend 
on the 7th of January, our lecture. Um, sorry, sorry. Will... 7th of May. Oh, don't <laughs> wait till January. <laughs> <laughs> you see, my age is showing. <laughs> 7th of May, thanks, Nada. 7th of May, which will be at Puslinch, but at the registration table, you will get a little card if you want. We'll give you address and uh, the speaker's name and uh, what's the subject. So, today I chose a dessert that can go either with fruit or with vegetables, apart from a little, little bit of a compromise for a color's sake. So, we have here lemon pudding. Now, lemons are good for you at all times, and you can mix them with fruit or with vegetable. I don't know, lemons with fruit sometimes are nice if you put them on a, a cantaloupes and honey dew and so on. Um, now that, can we get this water dried out, please? Sure. So, this pudding, again, is so simple. It's actually embarrassing <laughs> how simple it is. And if I make something wrong with it, I'll be even more embarrassed. Thank you, Nada. So here is what we have. We have a kind of tofu, or if you buy that event, if you buy the uh, packaged tofu, you so might need to have two packets. You know, the organic, uh, non-GMO tofu. You might depends where you buy it. You might need to have two packs, but approximately a pound of tofu. Then to that pound of tofu, we'll add some oil. In this oil, we have uh, combined um, the rest of the ingredients, such as uh, vanilla, lemon juice, and salt, just to save the space carrying, because you combine it all together anyway. Then we use raw sugar, you can use the marara sugar, you can use coconut sugar, or any sugar that you think is the best for you. Here, I use raw sugar. I hope that was two thirds. May I have the paper, please? And this is all you do. Out of these, you'll get six to seven servings. Again, depends how much you want, how much of a sweet tooth you have. So, this is what we do. Turn this on. It works. We'll call it done. Now, I use Vitamizer in this one. Uh, I mean Vitamix, because this machine makes it so nice and creamy. And this is, if you have a good vitamizer, it will come right. And all I do is pour it into a serving dish. And let it sit. You can put it to sit in a fridge or just at the room temperature and get it set. And this is really tasty. It's so easy to make, even if I can do it, but it, it's really good. There you go. Of course, when you serve it to the ice dish, you can decorate it with a little bit of lemon or orange rind. I think orange rind, orange rind looks nicer, not much. But what I did today, just for looks sake, put a little raspberry on top of each. So that looks nice. And that's all there is to it. I put a little bit of salt into it so that it gives that taste it brings out. The taste because tofu is quite bland. So when you put a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, it tastes much nice. 
And ladies and gentlemen, you, uh, you used firm tofu there, I know. Yes. Couldn't you use the soft tofu? Like, wouldn't that? Uh, sort of yes, you can use the soft tofu, but I use the firm tofu because at home I usually have firm tofu. I like tofu strudels, I like tofu um, scramble, like a scrambled eggs, I like uh, uh, tofu cutlets, um, tofu fingers, tofu ribs, or whatever you like to call it. And I always have firm tofu. So if you use firm tofu, you can use the firm as well as soft if you like. Using the soft tofu, you might need just a little bit extra tofu, a little bit of extra oil to make it set. But again, this is one of my own little concoctions. That I use sunflower seed oil. Uh, that oil I use almost for everything unless I specifically want olive paste. Uh, olive oil I use in, uh, uh, what shall I say, in focaccia bread that I make. I use uh, olive oil in crackers that I make out of quinoa and uh, ham and so on. Um, and. Um, Yes, sometimes in salads, but olive oil can be overpowering. And if you want olive oil not to taste so, then you haven't been processed so much, and I don't like process. I grew up on sunflower seed oil. Uh, my family used to grow sunflower seeds and extract the oil for money purposes, because we needed to survive. And whenever the oil would be extracted, there was a lot of sediment on the bottom of the, of the barrels, and that sediment we used to eat, that was our oil. <laughs> so if we had salad, we would put that sediment into it, and you get a little bit of crunchy sunflower seeds along. And that was, uh, to me, that was uh, nice. And perhaps, uh, you know, what you're used to, you like the most. <laughs> so, any other questions? No? So. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done with our um, demonstration. This meal that we have demonstrated to you will be served with salads. In uh, the salad that we have uh, provided for you, the dressing is made out of lemon juice, oil, again, sunflower seed oil, and sea salt. I, uh, or we do not use any type of vinegar. In, uh, in our dressings. Again, it will take too long for me to go into it and tell you why, but uh, vinegar is uh, classed as an irritant. And therefore, anything that will irritate, we try to keep away from. And um, I hope that you will find it tasty and that you will not miss the vinaigrette dressing in your salads. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now before we taste what was made for us, I would like to invite our coordinator to say a few words. Uh, every time he does prepare something different for us, so let's just listen. So hello once again. It is, uh, it is good to see all of you. I'd like to say thank you to all of those ladies who did take part today, and uh, I hope you'll not be disappointed. Uh, I am quite confident in that, you know, knowing the recipes. We have presented this in many places, so uh, we like doing it. And uh, once again, thank you for coming. This is our third cooking class this year for the season. Um, started with the bread making class. Um, we, we, we might have again in the fall, uh, but we will take a break for the summer. I already explained to some of you we uh, couldn't get this uh, venue for the summer months, uh, so uh, we, we, we decided to leave it for a few months and then maybe in the fall. Uh, if you left any contact information, uh, email, telephone, we might contact you. And if you know anybody interested, look, this is not, we, we do not promote anything uh, to sell or advertise anything. We, our aim, and, um, and goal is to promote a healthier lifestyle. So, and um, once again, thank you for coming. We, uh, 
our team really had a good time, you know, every time uh, we enjoyed the, uh, you know, the demonstration and sharing with you uh, the dishes we, we like and we promote as a healthier lifestyle. So we hope you can bring uh, new recipes for your families, uh, your, uh, 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 you know, children, grandchildren probably, and maybe even your friends, you know, hey, why can't we share with the neighborhood, you know, with the people we love, we, we know and we, uh, uh, we live close or, you know, this is, this is a great idea. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Every time normally we uh, say grace, uh, so uh, I think you don't mind. So uh, I'd like um, I'd like to say great, and then we will um, then we will uh, we'll have a chance to try. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, your protection and care, and uh, we ask you to uh, bless this food, and we ask you to nourish our bodies. In uh, Jesus' name, I ask and pray. Amen. 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 So uh, now we enjoy. Good appetite, and we hope to see you again. So Thank you. 